Hi, welcome to my Q&A. Uh, I want to start this one off by talking about the milestones that it represents. First off, I recently hit 25,000 subscribers on YouTube. Thank you, everybody, for being a part of that, for supporting me and uh, helping me grow my channel. Um, I also passed the 3,000 uh, follower uh, milestone on Reddit, which also very exciting for me. Reddit is the place where I started out my audio career uh, in October 2019. And it wasn't until... Gosh, I can't remember when I when I started um, my YouTube channel, but it, it was very slow for a while because I wasn't really focusing on it, didn't really know what to do with YouTube. And as you know now, it's become my biggest platform. So that's been uh, um, very, an interesting development uh, in my career was seeing that change. So without further ado, let's get into it. Um, I'm going to start off with some questions that have appeared repeatedly, whether it's in the comments uh, where y'all were asking questions for this one or on other Q&As that I've done. Um, the first one, this has come up a few times recently. People have been asking, who is Kativa? Um, you, you may have noticed that recently my videos in the description say co-written by Kativa. Kativa is my best friend. She is someone, she's one of my earliest listeners. She found me in November 2019. I'd only been recording for about a month. Um, and I was going through a really tough time and uh, it was very stressed. Um, stuff happening at work that was very stressful, stuff that was happening uh, in real life that was very stressful and in the audio world, etc. And some of the ladies of the uh, ASMR community got together and sent me some personalized re uh, relaxation recordings. And I dropped a little audio message on Reddit thanking them for that. And Kativa listened to that message and she reached out and said, well, can I send you one too? And I said, sure, why not? And she sent me a beautiful one uh, that just was really special to me. I've, I've listened to it a bazillion times. And um, from that, we started a friendship that's grown over the last year and a half. And she has been a source of strength and support to me. She's been uh, very, um, very helpful to me as I've, as I've faced a lot of these trials that I've been through over the last six months, particularly. Um, but she's been a, a steady friend and um, someone who's been very loyal and, and very wonderful to me. Um, she reached out to me in May of last year, uh, having created a Discord server. Um, her intention was to hand it over to me and I could go public with it whenever I wanted. And I said, well, why don't you retain ownership and go public now? And she said, well, in your Q&A, you said now was not the right time. And I, well, yeah, that's because I have enough going on that I didn't have the time to research how to do it and didn't have time to be the administrator by myself. But since you've already done this work and if you'll be the administrator with me, we can go live. And so if you come over to my Discord server, you're gonna be able to interact with Kativa. Uh, she goes by Kat. Um, as I said, my best friend, and she has also become my creative partner. She helps me come up with a lot of the uh, storylines that I then flesh out into outlines that I riff off of uh, to make the audios that, that, um, that get posted to my Post to my channel. So if you want to come over to the Discord server, you can interact with her and with me. I pop in there um, uh, sometimes more frequently, sometimes less, depending on what's going on in real life. You know, sometimes when I have a project deadline coming up or something like that, uh, something, uh, a family or a friend issue that's demanding a lot of my attention, you know, I might, I might be a little bit more scarce around there. Other times I'm on there uh, playing around and having fun interacting with people. So you can always uh, join the, the Discord. The um, link is right there on the thumbnail. Um, okay, next next question. I was going to say next pineapple. Next question. Does pineapple belong on pizza? <laughs> I think so, uh, depending on the kind of pizza. Um, like Hawaiian pizza, I am a fan. I do have an audio coming up um, fairly soon, I hope, that is a pizza baking date. And in the audio... I, Mooney, am not a fan of pineapple on pizza, and the listener, uh, y'all keep trying to put it on there and sneak it, in, sneak it on there when I'm not looking. Um, so yeah, it does, uh, depending on the kind of pizza. What's something that always makes you smile or makes your day better? Small things really make me smile a lot. Just a, a smile and a hello um, really make my day. Uh, interactions with the people that are dear to me, my friends, my family, um, always make me smile. Uh, what are my favorite audios to record? <sighs> I'm really not sure. Uh, 
I would have to say ones that are more romantic in nature. I'm a romantic kind of guy. And um, so while I have fun with stuff like there's a bear and, and the spider one, and I am a massive arachnophobe, I'm not kidding. Um, and the dragon one, the ghost one, you know, ones that are more ridiculous. Those are a lot of fun. But the ones that really are um, my favorites, I want to say, are some of the more romantic ones, like uh, the, the Will You Marry Me one and some of the Waking Up Together ones. Uh, and a lot of the snuggles. What's your favorite book? Well, I'd have to say probably the Lord of the Rings trilogy, if I have to pick one. I am a bit of a reader. I've kind of lapsed a little bit recently because I've been devoting so much of my time to other pursuits. Um, but I really like the Lord of the Rings uh, trilogy. I've also really enjoyed um, Ellis Peters' Cad File uh, series cat file a uh, is a 13th century um, Benedictine monk who solves crimes and they're they're really quick reads they're about 200 pages each and uh, a number of years ago I actually went and um, one by one acquired a matching set of, of all of them so those are a lot of fun as well where do you want to travel everywhere that I can go and come home safely pretty much I have been to almost every continent on earth. Uh, I've been to a number of countries. I've um, really enjoyed seeing different cultures, seeing different ways of doing things. Um, really want to go kind of everywhere. Japan is pretty high on my bucket list. I've never been. Um, and also really high on my list is uh, I've always been fascinated by the Himalayas, like Nepal, um, North, northeastern part of India, Bhutan. Bhutan, I hear, is is really um, challenging to go to as a tourist, but very worth it if you uh, if you if you go through with it. So that may be something I'd like to visit in the future. Advice for new creators. Okay, a couple of things. I'm going to soapbox just a little bit here. One thing is, I recommend finding out who you are and making audios that reflect that. Don't spend your time thinking about, well, what's going to get me a lot of views, what's going to get me a lot of likes, that sort of thing. One of my favorite creators is, um, well, she's Sweetheart Audio, used to be Honey Audio, um, and she does a lot of niche stuff, a lot of stuff that's very um, off the beaten path, and I've enjoyed a lot of it, a, a ton of it. Um, and I know her personally, and I can tell you that those niche audios are very her, as are the snuggle ones that she does. Um, she's very true to herself when she records and, and I really respect and admire that. Another thing I would recommend is to be very, very thoughtful before deciding to dive into the NSFW side of the house. Um, just be careful, make sure it's, that it's really what you want to be doing. Um, sometimes things do have real life repercussions, uh, people that may not support that kind of work, um, people who have power to affect your life that don't support that kind of work. So just be careful, be true to yourself. Um, and if, if that's where you want to go with your career, really make sure of it. Don't do it on a whim. Looking at your channel and voice acting career, is there something you wish you had done differently? Um, well, I wish I would have taken YouTube a little bit more seriously from the start. Um, honestly, there's not a whole lot that I would change about what I do or what I've done. I'm very happy with the kind of content that I'm creating. Um, there's a lot of me in Mooney in terms of my goofiness, my silliness, my playfulness, my romantic side. Those are all very me. And so I really enjoy that I've created this persona that I can... Um, it definitely makes the acting easier when I just have to play myself. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, there's not a whole lot I would change. A uh, few few questions that I've already covered in other Q&As. Favorite color, blue. Why do you record these audios? Uh, back in July, August of 2019, I went through a really tough time. I was always I was already an audiophile. I'd, I'd listened to audios for a number of years previously. Um, but during that particular um, rough patch, I got a lot of comfort from uh, audios that I found on Reddit where some very talented uh, voice actresses had created um, girlfriend role plays, wife role plays, um, comfort, positive affirmation type stuff, and it really helped me. And I got the desire to uh, pay that forward. 
And so I started out really doing a lot more comfort type stuff before I branched out into some of the, um, you know, more uh, kind of the sillier stuff that I do as well now. Um, but the reason I record these audios and the reason I keep recording them is because number one, it's fun for me. Number two, and these are in no particular order. Um, they're all equally important, I think. Um, number one, they're fun for me. Number two, I'm helping a lot of people. I'm giving people entertainment. I've had a lot of people reach out to me, say that my voice has helped them relax, uh, get sleep where they've had trouble sleeping, help them through lockdowns over the last year, um, help them when they feel like nobody cares, just to feel like there is someone who cares. And I really love people. I, I genuinely love people. Um, you don't have to really do anything to to earn my love um, as, as, a, as a human being. I think that people are, are all valuable and worthy of love. And so, yeah, helping people, bringing that goodness to people's lives and the fact that it's really fun. Uh, best advice ever given to me, I, it was, it was, um, the advice I was given was imagine your perfect partner, imagine what she'd be like, imagine her traits, and now go out and make yourself the kind of guy that that woman would want to be with. And that's the very best advice I've ever been given. It guides a lot of my decisions. Um, it guides a lot of my quest for personal improvement. What's my zodiac sign? Well, it is Leo. And I've recently um, uh, gone through the whole, oh, the whole the whole zodiac sign, the rising and the moon, blah, 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 blah. I don't even remember all that it's called, but there's, I don't know, man. There were so many things on there that I was like, okay, they've got cameras like spying on me and putting this in here because it's totally me. Um, but yeah, Leo, if you could eat only one thing, what would you eat? Um, and I, I, I'm supposing food is not an appropriate answer here. If I, <laughs> if I could only eat one thing, probably sushi. I'm a big sushi fan. In fact, I just had sushi for lunch right before recording this. Uh, what kind of music do you listen to? I listen to all sorts of music. Um, I like, I, I appreciate musical talent. I've been um, a musician since a young age and um, and uh, sing and play the piano. And, um, and I really appreciate talent in all its forms. Now that said, the talent that I most often put on my own playlist tends to be rock of the um, harder variety a lot of times. So I am a big hard rock fan, metal fan. Um, but I also listen to a lot of lighter stuff as well. Um, and if you if you go onto my Discord server, uh, there are links to follow my Spotify playlist. I've got one called Moon Tunes. It's got a few hundred songs on it. And I add to it periodically a little bit here, a little bit there as I, as I, um, as I find stuff. It's very rock heavy, but it's a little bit eclectic. There's some stuff on there that's Definitely heavy and stuff on it there that's a lot of a lighter, uh, lighter ride. Favorite bands and singers. Um, lately, I've been listening to a lot of Volbeat, a Danish metal band. I really like their album Shady Ladies and Outlaw Gentlemen, um, as well as their newer one. I can't remember what it's called. Rewind. Uh, I don't know. It's just it's on my Spotify because I listen to it a lot. Um, but on the Shady Ladies and Outlaw Gentlemen album, uh, one of the tracks, Lola Montez. Uh, Spotify says that it was my most played track of 2020. So, and they would know. Um, I also really, really like the band Spitz, S-P-I-T-Z. They're a Japanese band. There are like five of their albums on Spotify. Um, so you can listen to those, uh, including the song on their album, Togemaru. They've got a song called Shingetsu, which is a very strong contender for Mooney's favorite song of all time. Um, and the music video for it is absolutely gorgeous. Um, but the, uh, and, and I've actually got, I've got all but one of their albums. I had to get, I had to get a lot of them as imports from Japan. Um, so I made an Amazon wish list and shared that with my, with my, uh, with my friends and family and, and chipped away at that until I got, I've got all but their newest one that came out in 2019. Um, and then I've always really liked Pearl Jam. I, I like their music. I like their um, their versatility and the diversity of their music. And I've been to see them a few times in concert. Uh, just really 
and, and I like their conviction. You know, uh, whether or not I agree with Eddie Vedder on this or that issue, the man's got conviction. He he really believes in things and uh, is not afraid to say it. And I I value that in, in standing up for what you believe in. How long were you navigating doing ASMR before you started? Um, well, I'd been listening to audios for a number of years, as I said. As far as um, how long I thought about it before jumping in, uh, a couple of days. Um, I kind of decided in October 2019 I wanted to record, and pretty soon I was recording. A few days later. Um, okay, now getting into some questions that individuals asked, and I've got about four pages left of questions. I've been through about half a page so far, so this may may take a while. Coco Calypso asks, if you could get a, a perm, straight or curly, would you do it? And which one would you go for? Well, you know, I wear my hair on the shorter side. Um, if I were to get a perm, I would say I would go for like the Brad Delp from the 70s band Boston look. Like that dude, or no, Bob Ross. He's got, well, I mean, it's kind of the same look. Bob Ross or Brad Delp. Those dudes, like, they got it going on. Um, Allison asked, do you have any pets of your own? No, not currently. I have had dogs in the past. Uh, I grew up with Shetland sheepdogs and they are, um, some of my favorites, smart dogs. They're friendly. The only problem with them is they shed like crazy. And, um, so yeah, if you're, if you have a problem with dogs that shed, Shelties are not for you. Morning person or a night owl? I really have never loved being a, an early riser. I like to stay up late, but my job generally requires that I get my butt out of bed on the early side. So I'm a morning person um, against my own free will or against my own volition. Dogs or cats? Dogs every day of the week. Goldfish or Cheez-Its? Yes. Thank you. Um, Nightstar Audio asks, what's your favorite video game or console? I don't have a PlayStation 5 yet. I've got a 4 and a 3. Um, and I do a lot of PC gaming actually as well. Uh, a couple of years ago, went out and built myself a really, really high-end gaming rig that still, like I put Assassin's Creed Odyssey on it and cranked it up to the max settings and the computer kind of giggled and played it at 80 frames per second. So, um, <laughs> so... So I've got a I've got a really nice rig that I can use to play basically whatever I want. Um, I played through for the mods on my Discord server recently. I streamed um, Batman uh, Arkham Knight, which I'm a huge Batman fan. The games are fa fantastic. The superhero himself is fantastic. Um, and on on the server they call me Matt. So sometimes I'm Matman, and then my car is the Matmobile. So um, as far as favorite game, really, gosh, I'd say probably the one that had the biggest impact on me. I, I love the Uncharted series, but the one and, and most of the Assassin's Creed's, they did have a couple that were not so great. Um, the, the, I haven't played Valhalla yet, but Odyssey and Origins are two of my favorite games. Um, but the one that probably had the most significant impact on me as a person was The Last of Us. And if you haven't played it, it's, I, 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 I'll, I'll warn you, there is a very, very tragic event right at the beginning of the game. So trigger warning given, there is a very tragic event um, and involving a child. And, uh, but that game is just powerful. You know, I read a review, you know, they say that the movie Citizen Kane is cited to film students um, and they study it because it's an example of a movie in which everything was done well. The scripting, the casting, the acting, the blocking, the lighting, everything was just done really well. And it's a fabulous movie. If you haven't seen it, please go watch it. Um, the Last of Us is the Citizen Kane of video games, in my opinion. It's just marvelously, marvelously done and executed. It's a very heavy game. There's a lot of violence. There's a lot of um, of ugliness. And there's also a lot of beauty. So, um, 
yeah, if you if you have not played it, play it. If you have no desire to play it, go online and watch on YouTube one of the playthroughs. Uh, but be warned, very tragic event early on, and there are tragedies throughout the game. Uh, LGS is a hot dog a sandwich. Maybe? I don't know. I I, I kind of think it's like a corn dog that got lazy and didn't finish the job, so I don't know. Um, Bethany Irene asks, an uninteresting fact about myself. An uninteresting fact about myself. I mean, there are so many, like, for example, I consume oxygen at a higher rate when I exercise. Fact. Um, I'm the same height I was yesterday. Fact. Um, <laughs> uh, one of the more interesting facts about myself is that I have a hobby wherein I sit in my uh, recording space and have half a conversation into a microphone. And then I put that on the internet. So the best piece of mental health advice you've ever received, she asks. Um, I don't remember exactly how it was phrased, but proceed, proceed with the expectation of success or proceed expecting that success is inevitable. Um, we often create our own reality. When we get into our heads and worry about every little thing that could happen, we often create a self-fulfilling prophecy where our own anxiety causes us to underperform, which then results in the bad outcome that we were expecting in the first place or anxious about in the first place. And then we say, see, I was right to be anxious. Where if we would just have that confidence going in, um, that, that, you know, that confidence that we're going to succeed, a lot of times we're going to find that we succeed. And I've seen that in my own life more than once. Um, <clears throat> and um, so, yeah, proceed with the expectation that success is inevitable. Who's your favorite underrated character from anything? Book, movie, TV show, video game, and why? Um, if any of y'all have seen the Sherlock... Well, if anybody hasn't seen the Sherlock series on BBC with Benedict Cumberbatch and Martin Freeman, um, please get with the program. But the last series uh, of them had Sherlock's uh, sister. And she's just... I mean, she's insane, yeah, but she's an utter badass. And um, definitely someone who didn't get enough uh, time for us to get to know her as much as I'd like to. Please forgive me if I mispronounce this. Makia says, what is the strangest or funniest gift you've ever, you have ever received? I was given an ugly Christmas sweater with a T-Rex in a Santa hat holding a present. And I love it. Sadie Riordan asks, what is your favorite type of dog or cat? Um, I'm going to go back to what I was raised with Shetland sheepdogs. Love those. Love those dogs. Just hate the shedding. And what would you order at a coffee shop? Well, I'm a big fan of um, flavored hot chocolates, uh, spice ciders, um, those kind of drinks. So I, I, and Italian sodas if they got them. Mizumi Hoseki says, what's the first thing you look for in a partner or a friend? Um, there are a number of things I look for right off the bat. Integrity, honesty, genuineness, openness. Uh, but really the thing that strikes me the most is their willingness to accept me and to accept me as I am and then to deepen that friendship if they're also still willing to push me to be better. If you can accept me as I am while still pushing me to be better, I really, really value that in a friendship. Robbie Oxendine, Oxendine says, would you rather take a vacation to a beach, the mountains, or just stay home? Um, you know, some of my favorite vacations have been cruises in the Caribbean. Um, and I really just love um, Caribbean islands. Uh, I've been to the Dominican Republic a couple of times. I've been to Grand Cayman, been to Cozumel, been to the Bahamas. And I um, need to get to Jamaica. I haven't ever been there. Uh, but I really love beaches and and but I also love the mountains you know I, I um, love skiing and uh, but honestly I am more of a warm weather person I don't like being cold so I'd probably rather go to the beach honestly who's your favorite Power Ranger and why well the Pink Ranger because she's hot and if you're looking for more uh, of a, a, a deeper response than that you're going to be disappointed sorry that was Kira that asked that question 
Purple Star 45, what is your most treasured possession or your most treasured memories? My most treasured memories, there are several, um, but all of them have an element in common, and that is that they include my closest friends and family, people that um, I love very much, that are prominent in my life. Um, all of my most treasured memories involve those people. Um, my most treasured possession, uh, I had someone very close to me who passed away a number of years ago, and several of their most treasured possessions became mine, um, were given to me after their passing, and those have a very special place in my heart because they were very meaningful to that person and um, have become a way for me to remember that person who was so important in my life. Alley Girl 88 do you ever get recognized when you go out? Of course, all the time. Like people, are, hey Matt, you know, good to see you. You know, like when I go to work, people recognize me. <laughs> but I think what you were asking is, do people know me as Mooney? Uh, I've never once had that happen. But remember, I, I have 25,000 YouTube uh, followers or subscribers in a world of, are we up to 8 billion now? Or still somewhere in the sevens? I don't know. But yeah, I, I have never been recognized when I go out. Um, I'm not sure exactly how I would, how I would react, honestly. Lakeisha P says, asks, how did you get to the point where you were willing to share your art with the world? First off, very sweet of you to call it art. And I really appreciate that. Um, it took me a while to really see what I do as art. Um, and I, and I, I do now. Um, and I do see it as a, as an expression of my creative self. I never thought I was creative. I never thought that I was a creative person and it turns out I can be. Um, and so, and, and I say can be not am because it does depend on certain factors in my life. You know, the, the mindset at the time, sometimes I have to prepare myself to be creative. I have to get myself into that mindset where I can generate content. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> so yeah, so how did I get to the point where I was willing to share it with the world? Pretty much like I said, I just wanted to pay things forward to people. And especially early on, I just had to like not think about what I was doing because it does make me vulnerable um, that I'm opening up, putting myself out there, my voice out there <clears throat> for people to listen to. And um, so initially, I just tried not to think about the fact that I was doing it. Like, you know, put it out here on the internet and ignore the fact that people are going to be listening. I just, you know, I just uploaded it to the web, you know, be stored or something like that. Um, but yeah, really just the desire to pay goodness forward to other people. What's the thought process that allows you to ultimately post your work despite there being what you'd personally consider imperfections or do you not share until it's perfect for you? Um, I had to learn to accept imperfection in my work. Now that said, I have a very, very high standard and I have been known to go back to the drawing board and redo an entire audio from scratch if I feel that the vocal track um, left something to be wanted, if the story wasn't right. I've been known to spend, I spent two hours one time searching for the right crickets to add in the background. Um, so I do have a very high, um, a very high uh, standard. Um, I do have uh, have had over the course of my career some beta listeners that helped me out as well to, well, why don't you think about this? Why don't you raise that a little, drop that a little? And their input really helps me. Not that I require it to be able to post, but it definitely helps to hear, you know, to, to understand that other ears are hearing the same thing I am. That something that, a detail that may um, <clears throat> may be important to me, that their ears are picking, it up, picking up on it as well. Um, that sort of thing. <clears throat> Hang on one second, get a sip of tea here. And I'm drink drinking um, from Twining's Buttermint Tea. It's a um, mint vanilla uh, mix. It's very, very good. It's very smooth. And it helps me out with my voice to be able to record. Uh, and I have um, Sweetheart slash Honey Audio to thank for that. She's the one that introduced me to it. You can get it on Amazon. It's really good. Jesse M, do penguins have knees? I have no idea, but I do know that they have wings. What kind of pants do you like the best? I generally am a blue jeans kind of guy, except in the summer I like khaki shorts quite a bit. 
how did you find out you were so good at this? Again, very sweet of you to say I'm so good at this. Um, it's been something of a process for me to create things because I, I didn't really think I was very good at it first. Um, sometimes, especially with creative things, I lack a little bit of confidence. And so it took me a little while to get to where I was like, I actually am pretty good at this. And um, really just um, realizing as I, as I worked, as I made audios, that more ideas were coming to me and that, um, that I was able to keep going, uh, kind of helped me to start realizing Help me start realizing maybe I am creative. Like I'd never thought of myself in that way before. It's Raining Pigs asks, is there any type of audio that you would never do? I am strictly SFW. I will not venture into the NSFW side of the house. Um, there are specific triggers um, that I'm not going to touch. Uh, for example, I was asked if I would do an audio where my girlfriend was aborting my child. And I was very angry about that. And I understand that maybe an audio that um, some people might really um, want to hear, but I think it would be very, very triggering for a large number of people. Um, and I want to stay away from that. I want to stay away from anything that is um, racist in any way or race play, ageism, sexism. Um, I just am not a fan of any of those things. Um, and I avoid audios um, that that are for specific groups of people. I want to make my audios as much as possible. I mean, I try to make them M for A. Um, I do sometimes make M for F because there are certain things like period comfort or going for the ultrasound that are not going to be, um, you know, appropriate for an M for M kind of audience. Um, but I do try to say M for A as much as I can. And I try to avoid... You, you know, you, you may notice that in my audios, I don't um, put physical characteristics of my listener. I don't say your blonde hair or your um, blue eyes or anything like that. Um, I am Caucasian. I understand that many of my listeners are not. And I don't want um, my listeners to get in there and be like, well, this audio clearly wasn't recorded for me because he's describing someone that is not who I am. Um so I avoid specific characteristics or specific groups of people that would exclude um, a large number of my listeners. Sweet Jazz Love SJL asks, um, do you prefer spending time with friends during the beautiful sunny hours or the sparkling night sky? Well, I really am a fan of being out in the sunshine, enjoying the warmth, um, enjoying the light. Now, I've never... I mean, when I have had a nightlife in the past, it's been fun, but it's never really been my focus. Um, I'm much more of a daytime person and then prefer to be in at night most of the time. Uh, Maria Stefan 01, what type of script is the easiest for me to write, for you to write, for me to write? Um, well, first off, most of my audios are unscripted. Most of them are... Um, semi-improv where I've made an outline and then I'm riffing off of that. Um, I've only written two scripts. You can find them both on Reddit. Um, and one of them is A for A and I made a, a recording of it myself, the um, Put Your Head in My Lap. That was from a script that I wrote. And then one of them is F for M. So if you know my audio, Good Morning Sunshine, it's a waking up together one. I wrote a script called Good Morning Sunshine Part 2 it's the follow-up after that from the female speaker, male listener's perspective. And um, and that's been filled a number of times. Both of them have filled a number of times. Actually, the, the um, put your head in my lap has been filled like 30 times or something like that. 30 that I know of. And I've linked all of them in my um, Reddit posts. Um, now that said, the, the easiest type of audio for me to record a basic snuggle is just very easy to record. I, I just have to close my eyes and and snuggle and easy peasy. Um, doesn't mean it's not meaningful. Doesn't mean it's not wonderful to listen to. Some of the most uh, wonderful things in life are very simple, simple pleasures and closeness. I think that for most people, we 
love intimacy with another human being. We love to feel loved. We love to be held. We love to feel like we're important, like we're protected, like we're safe. Um, I like to feel that way. And, um, and, uh, and so that's very easy for me to create, but it's also meaningful for me to create as well as for my listeners to, to hear. What was one of the most outrageous scripts? This is from Farah. What was one of the most outrageous scripts you've gotten or been requested? Well, I spoke about the one where um, my girlfriend was aborting my child, uh, which was a bit out there. Um, I've had one requested where my girlfriend got in a car crash and is in a coma. And the last thing that had happened before she went out in the car was that we'd had a fight. And so I'm talking to a comatose listener. Um, and I got requested one that was um, about a mama dragon. Uh, and it, it was really kind of, it would have been really hard for me to make because it was totally focused like on the mama dragon. The part that I would have voiced would have been very little at the end. And so it, it was not something that could materialize. Cold Sobel Weebs says, what's the most favorite ASMR you have made and have fun doing? Well, my dragon one, um, so far so good. That one, I'm very proud of because the the sound effects that I used, I used like 46 or 48 sound effects, and like 36 or 38 of them, something like that, overlaid on one another in a six to eight second period, when the dragon lands and I created a cacophony of of noise, men shouting, swords being drawn, bows being drawn, horses screaming and stamping. And, um, and the princess also screaming and it took a long time that, that audio sat on, um, on my computer for a long time waiting for me to edit it. Like I want to say a couple months because I was a little bit intimidated by what I was planning to do. And once I started working on it, as I recall, I recorded and edited two other audios Um, between the time when I started editing the dragon one and when I finished and posted it, um, I spent a long time on that. I spent the better part of a day on those six to eight seconds. Um, I'm very, very proud of that. Uh, the drunken one, the, um, oh gosh, what's it called? Uh, I drink, I love you. Um, the drunken, I've been, I've been asked if I was drunk when I recorded that. I have never... Uh, I'm not a drinker. I've never been a drinker and I've never been drunk. So I was totally sober when I recorded that, but it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun to record. Um, the, uh, will you marry me proposal one? Um, I'm very proud of, and it was very special to me just, you know, as a romantic guy. Um, I, yeah, that one just resonated. And uh, another one that was really fun was the uh, You Should Be Studying one. And part of what was fun about that was putting together the montage of sound effects for making the hot cocoa. Because a couple of those were things that I had downloaded online. Others were opening and closing my actual silverware silverware drawer, um, taking a mug out and putting it down, mixing the stuff up, doing the, the, the whipped cream on top. All Like a lot of those I recorded myself and um, and then had to... Uh, denoise them and get them the right volumes and all this and put them together. And I was very proud about having done that. Another one that I'm very proud of um, was the first Rockstar Boyfriend one when I first get home. Uh, and the whole montage of sound when I'm starting to make dinner, like pulling out the pots and pans and go in stereo where I walk off to one side and do something, walk off to the other side and do the, you know, something else. Um, I played with that in, uh, in Audacity and figured that out all by myself. And it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, and actually, if you go to my Discord server, there is a, um, <clears throat> a channel on there called uh, Audio Creation. And I occasionally go in there and post screenshots and discuss uh, what I'm doing that make, to, to make specific effects or make specific audios. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. Um, and then one that was a lot of fun to make... Um, <laughs> On my Discord server, someone said uh, that, that that basically, yeah, you couldn't possibly record something that we don't like. And I was like, oh, uh, watch me. And so I recorded one ca- called Don't Worry, He'll Swerve. 
and <laughs> I'm not gonna I'm not gonna um to spoil it for you just go to my um go to my discord server uh there's a channel called um ye who enter here leave all hope behind and i've got a few cursed audios in there and that one is among them and so just look at the pins when you get to that channel and there's it's um <laughs> it's totally ridiculous um and then the other the other question that cold soda weaves asked is is water wet I would say it's the definition of it. I would say it's the definition of wet. Cold nuggets make me happy. Back scratches or head scratches, which one is better? Back scratches are better if I want to relax. Head scratches are better if I want to just feel adored and loved. So I can't say one is better than the other overall. I'd say it depends on what um, what I need or am seeking at the time. Do you like coffee or not? Eh, not much of a coffee drinker. I, I like various different uh, herbal teas. This buttermint tea that I'm sipping right now is one of my favorites. Uh, I also have a uh, caramel flavored one that's very, very nice. Um, Abby asks, is it pronounced water or water? Uh, water. I, I'm, yeah, water. Matt's right thigh. Biggest pet peeve. Okay. Um... When people don't use their turn signals, it's like, it's right there. It doesn't like, it's not an extra feature. It's built in like standard use the damn turn signal. Um, and then one of my other ones, and sorry, this is totally like the guys in the audience will relate when someone doesn't wipe their piss off the toilet seat, dude. I mean, come on, bro. Like you think that anybody else wants to take care of that for you. Uh, would you ever visit South Africa? I absolutely would. Um, there are very few places in the world that I would never visit. Christy C asks, do you like to travel? If so, what's one place you've been to that you really enjoyed? I love to travel. I love seeing the world, seeing different cultures. I also love traveling around my own country. This is, you know, there, people a lot of times get on Americans' case. Why do you always want to travel in America? Because our country is as big as like a continent. Like it's huge. And there is a lot of diversity of culture and scenery and things to do here. Um, so I don't like just staying within the U.S., but I, I, I like traveling internationally as well. Um, and uh, I really, as far as places that I really enjoyed, one that comes to mind was London. I really just had a, a ball in London. Just so much history. And, and a lot of it's my own history because the history of, of England is the same as mine up until like 1776. So from, from the, uh, you know, William the Conqueror up till then and, and even before the Roman influence and everything, um, you know, kind of fed into the culture that I um, am part of today. So I really, really enjoyed London. Nova Draws asked, what's your clothing style or aesthetic? Um, I'm kind of a jeans and t-shirts or polo shirts kind of guy. Although in the summer, I usually swap the jeans out for shorts and, and wear flip-flops. And then would you be okay with me drawing some fan art of you? Absolutely. I, I would love that. I would love that. We have on the Discord server a uh, fan art channel. Um, alternatively, you can send me anything you want at Moonlight Audio 1. Moonlight Audio and then the number one all together. No spaces, hyphens, dots, whatever. Well, no spaces in email address anyway. But um, yeah, MoonlightAudio1 at gmail.com. Lizzie Rosemary, you asked a bunch of questions, dang. Number one, if you could go back in time and change one thing that would impact history, what would it be? I would not change anything because, dude, you're you're screwing with with time and, and all that, just never gonna end well. I just don't wanna screw with history. Let's just focus on the future and make it what we want it to be. That's That's my philosophy. If you could choose your birth year, what year would you pick? I would pick the year that I was actually born in. It kicked ass. The music was great. Wouldn't change a thing. If there was a tornado and you only had time to take three things, what would you take with you? I'm assuming that this tornado, like, that I'm going into maybe a shelter that has electricity. So I'm going to say my phone, my wallet, and important documents. What do you think are the best conversation starters? Stuff that's light, stuff that's fun, stuff that's relatable, and stuff that um, 
that invites further conversation, stuff that's open-ended, not just yes, no. Uh, if you could create someone to be your best friend, what personality would you give them? Well, I would want someone that is thoughtful, generous, um, kind, uh, supportive, playful, loving. Um, there are a lot, I mean, a lot of positive qualities. Um, the thing that would be most important to me would be what I said before, accepting me and loving me as I am, but still encouraging me to be better. If there was one thing you could change about the world, what would it be? I would like to get rid of isms, like for example, racism, sexism, ageism, anything that we are using to, to separate ourselves and to create classes or distinctions between groups of people to look at us versus them. I think I would like to see all of those things go. Um, they really, because I think that you can enjoy and appreciate who you are and what makes you unique without getting into it to the point. I guess what I'm saying is enjoy and love and celebrate what you are because it's what you are, not because something else is inferior or different or strange. You know, love who you are and love who other people are too. Are you an introvert or an extrovert? Generally pretty extroverted. If you could make your own country, what would you name it? And who would you let live there? Um, gosh, I would probably name it Moontopia. And I would let anyone live there who... Um, was coming to contribute and be positive and and um, and uh, work for the greater good and the common good. If you were to create your own company or brand, what would its name and purpose be? Well, it would probably be called Moonlight Audio, and it would focus on bringing positive audio content into the world. And that's a, I know that's a cheap answer, but I'm I'm sticking with it. Gracie San Angelo asked, do you listen to other creators? If so, who? Um, I do listen to some other creators. The two that I listen to the most, um, and I, I've kind of actually fallen off a little bit in terms of my audio listening uh, recently, but the, the two that I listen to the most um, are Honey Audio and Panthera Audio. Uh, and then, as I said, um, my, my uh, best friend Kativa made an audio for me that is very special to me that I've listened to many, many times. Favorite movie or TV series? Um, big fan of Burn Notice that was on the USA Network um, for a number of years. Uh, movies, I love the Lord of the Rings trilogy. I love the, um, I love Ocean's 11 and 13. I, I think somebody told me there was like an Ocean's 12 in the middle, but we're not going to talk about that. Um, and I recently watched The Haunting of Hill House on Netflix. Highly recommend. So good. Um, Another one of my favorite shows, Arrested Development. Just, I haven't seen the fifth season. I was not terribly excited about the fourth. The, f the first three seasons were were masterpieces. Um, uh, please forgive me if I mispronounce this. But Zyda says, what inspires you to keep going and still do videos? Kind of the same things I talked about earlier, that I'm bringing positivity to people. It's fun for me. Um... And I, I want to continue um, being a positive influence in people's lives. What are you currently listening to or watching? Well, um, I have been watching the show You, uh, the first season on Netflix. And dude, that guy's creepy, like real creepy. Um, and listening, well, I talked about how I've been listening to a lot of Volbeat lately and listening to... Um, uh, my Moon Tunes playlist. It's really kind of a bunch of different things um, that I've put on there. Uh, other things I'm watching, you know, so there was a show that I used to watch on TV with my dad when I was a kid. And for Christmas, uh, not this past Christmas, the one before, I received every season of it on DVD. And so... I haven't really gotten into it. I just haven't had time yet, but I am going to go back and rewatch all those. 
Jeannie K says, are, are sweatpants the best type of pants? I would have to say no. I've got some really awesome pajama pants. Those are the best pants. Glasses or contacts? Um, it depends, you know. I, I, you, you've probably seen from my avatars uh, that sometimes I have glasses on, sometimes I don't. Um, and it all depends on what I'm in the mood for. Um, and how much sleep I got the night before. If I didn't get enough sleep, then contacts are not happening because my eyes will just sting. High top checks or ankle? I really... Oops. High top checks or ankle? Uh, my, my shoes are pretty much all lower, like ankle height. What was your favorite birthday gift? This past year, I was given a really nice... Um, leather bag with my initials monogrammed on it uh it's like an overnight size carry-on type of bag and i it's lovely and i i just love it do you wear cologne if so what's your favorite scent i'm not usually a cologne wearer um if i'm going out on a date or something like that i will and usually um aqua di Gio is uh the one i go with um and if you want to know my favorite perfume the original scent of uh, Lolita Lempica is to die for. Just, I mean, like, if I smell it, I will die. But I'll be very happy in the, you know, dying thereof. <laughs> so, uh, it, good luck finding it these days. Unfortunately, they changed the, uh, the scent uh, a few years ago, and it's exceedingly difficult to find the original these days. Um, Lemon Yellow asks, would you rather have three extra arms or eyes in the back of your head? I'd rather have the arms, honestly, because I could do more stuff, plus eyes in the back of my head, like I've got hair back there, so I wouldn't actually be able to see anything, and I'd probably get hair in my eyes a lot. Allison Escalona asks, what's your favorite thing to do during a rainy day? Um, it depends. If I'm, you know, currently with a partner at the time, I might like snuggles. Um, I really like to read books, play games, watch movies. Sometimes I really just, and, and on a rainy night, I love to just sit there in bed and listen to the rain. And um, it's, it's just beautiful, beautiful. Alexandra Luis says, do you know, asks, do you know how to sing? If so, can you sing for us? Uh, yes and yes. I've actually sung on a couple of my audios. Um, and uh, I did some singing when I was in college and in high school. And, um, and it's something that I enjoy uh more on an amateur basis at this point uh are you a private person or not uh yes and no i'm an open book in some ways other things i'm very private about um like you may have noticed for example that i didn't i said that i would be born in my birth year um in the year i was actually born and didn't tell you when that is so um have you ever had a nickname well yeah people call me mooney so that's not my real name um, are you a clean or a messy person? Yeah. So I really like things being tidy and organized. Generally, I'm pretty good at that, but unfortunately, sometimes I get to be a little bit messier. Um, one of my problems is having knickknacks and stuff that I just don't have a good home for it. And so it accumulates a little bit and then finally I'll like figure out what to do with it. Favorite author, I'd say favorite, single favorite author, probably Tolkien. Probably Tolkien. And yes, I'm a nerd, so shut up. Dana asks, who do you feel is sexier, Batgirl or Catwoman? I'm going to go with Selena Kyle. Like, Barbara Gordon's hot and all, but man, Selena Kyle, damn. So, yeah, I'm going to go with Catwoman. Jesh Besh said, do you, think, do you think storms are just NASA's way of covering up space battles? I had actually thought about that. And the fact that there's someone else asking, I think we might be onto something there. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with yes. I think they are. Yeah. Uh, Holly Marlowe, have you how have you been spending time during quarantine? Did you teach yourself a new instrument or language? Chart a course to an undiscovered island in an undisclosed lo location? Discover a magical realm in the back of your closet? What sort of adventures have you been on? Well, I've spent a lot of time during quarantine making audios. Biggest difference, honestly, for me was that I wasn't able to get a haircut for like three months or something. And that was really, that sucked because I usually get one like every three weeks. And speaking of which, I'm just about due for one right now. Christina 
asks, what's your favorite way to enjoy a day off? Well, I'm enjoying this day off right now by making this Q&A. Um, days off, a lot of times I like to um, play video games. I recently, like, I, I used to do cross stitches uh, to pass time on really long road trips as a kid. And I recently got back into that. Um, and so I'm working on one right now that is a... Um, a a snowed in cabin with the uh, northern lights above it and it's really it's gorgeous i've, I've finished maybe about 20 percent of it um it's ex it's extremely complex um but it's going to be really lovely when it's done um and that one i will actually frame and have uh have put up in my home um and then christina also asked do you prefer sausage links or sausage patties or maybe a different breakfast sausage altogether um more a fan of sausage patties than links, to be perfectly honest. Girlfriend Audios asks, if you had one and only one wish, what would it be? Um, probably the thing that I crave most in in life in general is peace. Um, and you know, and that's a little bit of a cheap answer because there are a lot of things that go into peace. You know, feeling loved, feeling adored. Um, having an emotional connection with someone special, uh, feeling good in my own skin. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that goes into peace, but I would wish to have peace and serenity. And I would wish that everybody could have that. Lexi Grace Carter, do you think race matters dating-wise? Yes and no. So I think that the way that race... So I'll, I'll preface this by saying that I personally have been in... Uh, I won't say how many, but at least one interracial relationship over the course of my life. Um, and I think race matters from the sense that different races may have different experiences in the world. And you need to be um, open and aware of the fact that you may not understand um, exactly where your partner's coming from on things because they've experienced the world in a different way than you have. And um, so in that sense, race is very important when dating because you need to not, you need to break your mind free of thinking that your um, partner's experience is similar in a lot of ways to your own because it may be very, very different. Um, as far as does it matter from a should people of different races date? No, I'm, I think that you should, uh, as I said, I, I, think that we should all celebrate ourselves and each other and you know as long as people can um open their minds up to understand one another's uh context and one another's experience i see no reason why people of different races can't be together um selena says is asks is the little guy on all of your thumbnails a good representation of what you look like um some more than others um kind of look like me, you know. Um, have you ever been to Disney? If so, what was your favorite part? I've been to Disney World and Disneyland. Um, Disneyland, <clears throat> it's been a number of years since I went there. Um, went there a few times as a kid, but then um, when I discovered Disney World, that just, I mean, because the Magic Kingdom is Disney, uh, is Disneyland, plus about like 30% bigger. So, one thing that I really, really, really love is the World Showcase at Epcot. And I know a lot of people are like, that's so dumb. But I really love, like, as, as I said, travel and cultures and diversity of people and ways of life. And I really, really love um, that aspect of Epcot. Um, I also really uh, love um, a lot of the stuff in the Magic Kingdom and just the, the whole... Disney magic feel of it you know it brings back a lot of memories of childhood I used to watch a lot of Disney shows on on TV when I was a kid and um and it just brings back a lot of really good memories in that in that respect uh Selena also asked if you were to spend a year alone on an island what three essentials would you bring with me with you I'd say a machete some rope and a year supply of food and water <laughs> do you prefer a computer or a laptop it depends what for. Um, you know, I do a lot of my work on a laptop, in fact, because my recording space is, um, well, it's actually in my closet, which is a walk-in closet that I've put a bunch of acoustic paneling up on, 
and then my clothes are the uh, rest of the acoustic shielding. Um, couldn't bring my desktop computer in here. So this is being recorded right now on my laptop. Well, on my microphone, which is going to an audio interface, which is then plugged into the laptop. Um, as far as, you know, because like I said, I've got both. I've got my laptop and then I got the gaming rig that I built. Um, and I do most of my audio editing um, on the laptop. Well, actually, kind of these days, I do it about half and half. And then I render the videos mostly on my on my desktop because it's faster and it's more reliable, uh, more powerful machine. Sammy is back, asks, is there something you'll miss about being less popular? And by that, I'm understanding, am I going to miss something about, um, you know, as I as my channel grows, is there something going to be missing about being less obscure? Not really. It's it's nice to be known. It's nice to be um, to know that my content's getting out there and getting to people and that people are enjoying it. Um, and you know, as, as, as you may know, I've, um, established myself well enough that I was able to do a collab with Cardlin and I've had people asking, um, for collabs with a couple other people. I haven't reached out to them yet, but I may do that in the future and they're going to be much more, um, likely to say yes to collaborating with someone that's, you know, got a few thousand followers on YouTube and has a body of work rather than some, you know, new guy that has just barely picked up a microphone for the first time. Um, the Bokuto child says, do you really like helping people with tough times? Yeah, I do. I really like to, um, alleviate people's burdens. I have a very, um, very strong compassionate side and I am very empathetic. I, I like to help people through their difficulties and help them to get out the other side or get to the other side um, and experience happiness. So yeah, I really do like to help. Chandler Bing says, do you put back the grocery shopping cart where it should be after putting your groceries in your car? Every time, every time. And in fact, sometimes I'll actually take a couple extra carts with me if there are a couple out there in the parking lot, because who wants their card smashed into by a, a shopping cart, you know? Um, Barbie C asks, what's your, been your biggest challenge when making audios? Honestly, sometimes it's been confidence. There have been a lot of times that, or several times that I've sat down in front of the microphone and been like, gosh, I, the, 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 the words just aren't quite flowing the way I want them to. Um, and when that happens, I tend to get in my head a little bit and then I freak out a little bit and then it gets even harder. So I would say confidence has been sometimes the thing that's been, uh, been uh, a challenge to me. Soraya Aldis asked, what is one, one way to gain respect from you or for you? Um, integrity. I like people that are, that have a conviction and are willing to stand by that conviction. Even if I don't um, necessarily agree with them, if they're a person of integrity, then I will respect them. I had the opportunity um, a few years ago, for example, uh, I was at a, um, at a uh, meeting. I'm not going to talk much about that, but I was at a meeting where one of the keynote speakers was a very prominent member of a political party that is the opposite ideology from the one that I espouse myself. And I uh, had an opportunity afterwards um, because he and I are in the same line of work uh, in our, well, his pre-political life. <clears throat> and I um, was able to go up and shake his hand and talk and share some of my experiences in work and his experiences. And I found him to be, you know, we're, we're politically very opposite one another. But he was a very personable man, very intelligent, um, very compassionate, and and um, and really, and I, you know, kind of, I'd, I'd known of him in the past, and kind of thought, in general, that he was a man of integrity and character. So even if I don't agree with the positions he takes, um, I do think he's a good person. I do think he's a good man, and integrity is is the way that he got that respect from me. Um. Okay, a couple more questions from Untitled Manuscript. What is the best 80s or 90s movie? My favorite movie from the 80s or 90s is The Princess Bride. Great movie. It's it's timeless. It's a classic. It, it's wonderful. Um, 
What television show are you still mad about that got canceled after the first season? After the first season? I don't know. Honestly, I really... I don't know enough shows that well to be able to say. Um, I'm, I'm mad about how some of them got ended. And, you know, for example, I thought that they could have... Um, I thought the burn notice ran out of steam a little bit there at the end. And I wasn't very happy about that. Um, but yeah, I couldn't say which one after the first season. And Hanny417 says, Where'd you get the inspiration for the name Moonlight Audio and Moonlight Sonata? Well... When I was coming up with my username, I'm, I'm usually terrible with usernames, and um, I was bouncing ideas uh, off of a friend who's also an audio creator, and um, one of the things that came up, uh, that I came up with was, was um, Midnight Audio, and she was like, well, Midnight, not so much, so I threw out there, Moonlight Audio, and she was like, yes, that's it, keep it, and so, I mean, it's really not any more of a of a great story than that we were just um brainstorming and that one came up i wanted to have something that evoked kind of a romantic kind of feel a peaceful serene kind of feel and um and that that did it and uh and from that came my nickname mooney um that came from my server first and and kind of is what i go by now um in my audio career and then the Moonlight Sonata, of course, um, Beethoven's masterpiece. Uh, that um, it just seemed natural when I when it was you know Moonlight Audio that I that I would name my Reddit my subreddit the um, Moonlight Sonata and also the Discord server. What is your favorite movie of all time? Probably the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Um, again, like I said, um, just phenomenal. Um, and then what's something on your bucket list you haven't gotten to do yet? Uh, I mentioned a couple places that I want to go on my bucket list, and one of them is the Himalayas. And I almost was able to go visit that um, a few years back. Unfortunately, it didn't work out, and so it had to go back onto the, it had to stay on the bucket list. But hopefully, I'm going to get to go out there um, before too many more years pass. So that's it. Just over an hour and eight minutes. Um, Thank you, everybody, who submitted questions. I really appreciate you taking the time to do that. And for those of you that have sat here and listened to me ramble and ramble for over an hour, um, appreciate you taking the time. Appreciate your support. Um, I anticipate having some new content for you uh, in the next you know, few weeks from now and getting back up on it. Uh, in the meantime, as I've said, come, come interact on the Moonlight Sonata Discord server. Uh, the link is on the thumbnail there. And we really welcome, we, we are coming up on 700 members of the server and really welcome. It's a very inviting place. People have said repeatedly that it's very wholesome, very uplifting, very supportive, very loving. Um, occasionally we'll have mushy hours on there where we go in and just like vomit love all over each other. And, <laughs> and it's just, it's been a really, it's been a real blessing in my life to have that server and that interaction with some of my listeners. And I know that a lot of them have been um, helped out through some very challenging times uh, over the last year or so. So please come play with us and interact with us. And until next time, take care of yourselves.